Welcome back, friends. Arlet here with a Reddit relationship story from a guy seeking advice about his marriage and his very wild wife. So he's 38 and she's 28. He says, about a year ago in July of 2022, my wife and I and our seven month old baby moved across the country for my job. We were under enormous stress with the move, which cost a lot of money and we weren't really wealthy at the time. I didn't want to hire professional packers for our one bedroom apartment. I thought we could pack our boxes ourselves since we had the time and it would save several thousand dollars. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. We were already spending a lot of money to move the furniture across the country and my wife was super angry about this. She grew up very spoiled. So all of us are in the small apartment and I was focused on packing larger fragile things, but to my wife, it didn't seem like I was packing enough compared to her. She kept yelling at me and had been complaining at me for months. I thought it was just postpartum. In fact, one month before the move, she was visiting her parents and she went crazy on me when I told her I was going to the movie theater alone. She demanded I FaceTime her in the theater and show her the tickets, accusing me of cheating. I look back on that and think maybe she was actually just projecting and she was cheating. I'd been accused of cheating prior to this, which was totally false with no reason to suspect. Yeah, usually if someone's getting accused of cheating in a relationship with absolutely no reason for the other partner to think this, it's oftentimes because they're cheating or they're just projecting like you said, unless they're just an insecure person. So he continues, back to the move. My wife continued to be a nag. She even aggressively poked my shoulder while we were packing because she was so PO'd. She asked me to watch our son, so I did and decided to FaceTime my parents for like 10 minutes. I get off the phone and she starts complaining at me. Why are you talking to your parents and not helping? I'm like, you told me to watch our son, what's the big deal? And then my wife said to me, your parents do nothing for us and I'm ashamed to say what I did next. I have tremendous remorse and really regret this, but I literally spit on her while she was holding our son. I don't know what came over me. There was just so much tension and I'm so ashamed and she knows it. I've never hit her or done anything like that before. Bro, you're 38 years old. We can't be spitting on people, come on. I mean, technically that's considered a assault. So what are you doing? He says, we went to marriage counseling, but the woman we went to was terrible. And she was just like, how does that make you feel? Wife to this day uses that spitting situation against me. I tell her, you were the one who was poking me aggressively and we were under tremendous stress. It was an unfortunate event and she never reflects on the things that she's done or not done to contribute to the failure of our marriage. So then while we're moving after this spitting event, she tells me for the first time in our five year relationship that her father had a long term affair when she was 10 years old. It was so bizarre to me that she was suddenly telling me this after five years together. It made me wonder if she was suddenly telling me this because she was actually cheating and this was her strange way of sort of confessing. Yeah, that does sound kind of strange. He says, this wasn't the first time I've had my suspicions about her. Two years before this spitting event, before my son was born, there were tons of photos of a scratch on her butt that she was posting in underwear while she was out of town with her parents. She often visited her parents prior to our son's conception. She also had lingerie photos on her phone that I had taken or seen before, but now there were emojis covering her face, probably sending them to guys. I also found pictures of other guys on her phone. Wait, bro, what? You found pictures of other guys on her phone and that didn't make you suspicious enough to do something about it? I mean, how did you not find it suspicious that your wife was constantly out of town staying with her parents and you're finding pictures like this on her phone? I mean, are you even sure this is your kid? So he says, cut to last April of this year. I get suspicious of her again and check her phone only to find sensual innuendo texts from some random guy. She denied cheating. And then I went through her iPad and I found out that she made a adult tape with a different guy than the one on the phone. Then I saw that she was sending sensual texts with multiple other guys. Bro, you definitely got to get a paternity test now. He says, then I saw on her iPad that she had cheated in our home with the initial guy who was sending her those texts. She didn't know that I had her iPad and she swore on my son's life that she never cheated during our marriage. Oh, she's even swearing on your kid's life. That's terrible. Days later, I gave her the iPad back and told her I watched her tapes and that I know everything. I jokingly said that the tapes were hot and her response to that was, it was, wasn't it? I should start making my own adult content. My wife has absolutely no remorse for what she did and completely blames me for her cheating. I found more pics on her iPad from earlier in our marriage that are highly suspicious of cheating as well. Inappropriate selfies and that sort of thing. So I got a paternity test and our child is indeed my son. No, oh, well, thank God for that. Then I filed for divorce. She's completely blamed me because I pushed her away, neglected her, and even claims that I cheated on her last year, which is an insane lie. I work very hard and have a prestigious career and make excellent money providing a great life for my wife who got to stay home with our son and live a luxurious life. And now I just feel horrible about my marriage failing. I keep feeling like I'm at fault for pushing my wife away. 
And I just need to know what you all think about my story. What I think of your story is that you married a nut, this woman is out of her mind, all this behavior couldn't possibly be your fault. I mean, clearly she's got some kind of mental issue. Nobody has this much going on behind their husband's back and it's completely his fault. I mean, definitely what you did to her was wrong. The th story at the beginning about the spitting and all that definitely should have never happened. But that still doesn't justify everything you told us that she did after the fact or what she did prior to that because you told us that she was doing things behind your back before this. If she's this type of person, then clearly you made a mistake in who you chose for a wife. She's got more mental issues than you probably realize. No one who behaves the way she has is completely right upstairs. And part of it is probably the fault of her father who exhibited the same behavior when she was a child. I mean, if he's that kind of husband, who knows what kind of father he actually was. Probably not a good one. But what do you all think about this story? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments and click like so you can boost this video in the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we got another very interesting story coming up here. So he says, it looks like my wife is now finally realizing that decisions have consequences. The backstory is that my wife started an affair with a 23 year old colleague back in February. And it doesn't say what this guy's age is, so who knows what the age difference is there. But he continues, I discovered it almost straight away. After a very brief attempt at reconciliation, she decided to leave me. In mid-April, she moved into a new apartment, allegedly on her own, but I was pretty certain that this guy was living there too. While all this was unfolding, my wife deployed all the usual tactics to defend her terrible behavior, like blaming me for being a terrible husband and claiming our whole marriage has been nothing but misery. The situation was made messy by the fact that we have a daughter whose custody we share 50-50. Anyway, the sign that things were maybe less than perfect between my wife and this guy started to reveal themselves very early on, even before she moved out. In particular, I remember her texting me while she was on a three-night sensual vacation with him to tell me that she was feeling sad and that she was thinking of coming home early. I ignored the message, so she stayed. Then a week after she moved out, when we had our first child handover day, my wife gave me a note saying, I'm so sorry, I really messed up. I didn't know what to make of this, so I ignored it too. For the next few days, our exchanges became cold and business-like. This was largely because I was employing gray rock technique. I think this really annoyed her. But then last week, she texted me on the day before handover day and asked if I wanted to do something together. I replied, uh, no thanks. On the handover day, we met in neutral territory in the local park as we did every week. It was my turn to collect our daughter from her, and I barely had to say hello before my wife broke down in tears saying that she's so sad and lonely and she's struggling. <laughs> oh, what a pity. She then said she misses me and that she would turn back time if she could. I thought she might come to this conclusion eventually, but I thought she'd last at least six weeks. <laughs> it's only been a month and a half. I reminded her that she was unhappy with me, so if she's still unhappy without me, then maybe the problem is her. I asked her what she was doing to improve her mental health. She said she desperately needs to get her ADHD diagnosed and medicated before she makes more reckless decisions through chasing dopamine highs. Okay, bro, let me just stop you right there and say this sounds like another one of these women who's just never happy no matter what happens or how good they have it. They have no ability to just sit back and reflect on how good their lives actually are compared to 99% of the rest of the world. They think the grass is always greener, they're constantly miserable, and they use pills and wine to try to cope. Or they try to claim that they have some sort of mental imbalance when the reality is they just have a bad attitude. And oftentimes these types of women, which is many women, want to blame their husbands or everyone around them for why they're miserable. And the real problem a lot of the time is that they're ungrateful. Somewhere along the line in their childhood, they got the impression that their future would be them living like a princess. And even the ones who are treated like and living like princesses, well, their lives aren't good enough because they want to be living like queens. And the ones who are living like queens, well, their lives aren't good enough because they want to be treated and living like goddesses. So they make everyone around them as miserable as they they are and their doctors convince them to get on medications when the reality is she doesn't have any sort of problem that requires her to be on meds. She is the problem. He says, yeah, that's right. She blames ADHD for having the affair and destroying our family. The obvious elephant in the room was whether she was still seeing this guy or not. So I just asked the question outright. She told me she's spending less time with him. However, she's sort of become dependent on him for certain things like her housing. <laughs> I said, what? Feigning surprise, even though I suspected this all along. She confirmed my suspicions. The apartment she's living in is shared with this guy. I pretended like I couldn't believe the stupidity, but really nothing surprises me with her anymore. How could she move out of our stable marital home and into an apartment with a 23-year-old delinquent who she's been seeing for all of a month? And not only that, 
but it turns out that this guy's only there for half the week when my wife doesn't have our daughter, which means he only pays a quarter of the rent and bills. But because his name's on the lease, my wife isn't entitled to any state benefits. In other words, she can't afford the rent and is eating into our family savings to cover her basic living costs. And the worst part is, she signed a 12-month lease with this guy, which means she's stuck in the arrangement. At this point, she said she was truly sorry. She made a terrible mistake and wishes she had listened when I tried to stop her from leaving. Blah, blah, effing blah. So many women do this to themselves. And then when their husbands try to tell them they're making poor decisions, they think, I'm not going to listen to him. I don't have to listen to a man. And they go do idiotic things, ruin their lives, and then they end up regretting it. So he continues, she said she never planned to rent this place with this guy, but she couldn't afford a place on her own. So he agreed to help her out. Oh, great. So he's her effing knight in shining armor. <laughs> she also said that she'd do anything to get back with me. For starters, she said she'd try to get this guy to leave the apartment and she'll ask the landlord to take his name off the lease. The problem is, I struggle to believe a word she says. I asked her what's wrong with this guy that's causing her to feel this way and she said that he's done nothing wrong. It's just that now she realized she's still in love with me and she doesn't want to string him along. Yeah, that's complete bullcrap. What most likely happened is she had this fantasy built up in her head and it took her moving out and being put in this completely miserable position before she realized this guy she's dating is a complete loser and that she actually had it really good, much better when she was living with her husband. And now her decisions are being driven completely by her lack of resources and her downgraded lifestyle, not by her actual love for him. And the fact that this guy's even entertaining these conversations gives me the impression that he's maybe considering forgiving her and forgetting. But if she's this out of her mind and capable of doing something this idiotic, Who's to say what she'll do next? He says, well, of course she's not going to admit that it's all gone horribly wrong with this guy and that I'm just the backup plan. <laughs> well, I guess this guy's smarter than I thought. So I asked why she suddenly realized she loves me again and she said something about our marriage not being all bad. <laughs> I pushed her on this point further and she said she misses the things we used to do together. For example, she misses being able to have intellectual conversations. <laughs> so this guy's a dum dum. <laughs> so then this guy laughs and says, because intellect is not exactly his strength. <laughs> yep. Finally, I asked her if this guy knows she still has feelings for me and she said that he does, but that he wants to be with her anyway. At this point, I start thinking maybe they effing deserve each other. Mm, sounds like they do. We ended the conversation with me saying that I'm not currently interested in getting back with her and that her priority needs to be getting herself out of this absolute mess of a situation and improving her mental health. Yeah, that sounds about right. I admit I take some satisfaction in seeing it all fall apart for her like I knew it would. But overall, it's just kind of sad that it's come to this, especially considering we were pretty happy together at the start of the year. I also worried that my wife's behavior is just so irrational that maybe this is all one big mental breakdown, in which case I don't really know what to do or what extent I should support her. It's in no one's interest and certainly not in our daughter's interest if she does suffer from a mental breakdown. And I'll admit, I'm uncomfortable about the thought of her feeling forced to share an apartment and a bed with some imbecile purely because she's got nowhere else to go. My friend, enough with the savior complex. Stop thinking these thoughts. He says, Ugh, what an effing mess. Any advice you could offer me on this is certainly appreciated. The only advice I can offer is bro. Stop with the savior complex. I get that she's your wife and you loved her. You want to take care of her. But the reality here is that she's got problems. You don't need to make her problems at your problem. And if you do happen to cave and take her back, all that's going to happen is eventually she's going to get those same feelings that you're the reason she's miserable. When, as I already explained, she's just one of these people who's going to be miserable no matter what. She's again going to start thinking the grass is greener. And as soon as another opportunity comes along for her to do something like this, she'll take it. Especially if the opportunity comes from someone who isn't some younger loser who's going to force her to be in an apartment going broke. If the guy who comes along is going to offer her a better deal, she's absolutely going to take it. And then not long after that, she's going to be making that guy miserable and blaming him for why she's never happy. Something tells me based on the way this guy's talking that he's considering doing this and he might actually take her back. And I hope for his sake that he doesn't do it. But that's all I got to say about this. What do you all think of this situation? Let me know your opinion down in the comments. Click like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with someone you think would like it. And make sure you check out my main channel for more life and relationship based content. Till then, hope y'all take care of yourselves. Support and be good to good women. Peace.